What's going on everybody? Good afternoon. I know this is usually the time of day where you would tune in to expect maybe the snap count video or the pro football focus video, but I think I'm going to just let those videos run at their regularly scheduled time of the week, which would be next week, Monday. I know the game was yesterday and people like to get into that data right after the game, but I think I'm going to hold off on those videos because we have more important things to talk about right now. Um, I want to talk a little bit more about this team in terms of like what is going wrong rather than just going through the data clinically. So instead of talking about that stuff, I want to discuss the, uh, the problems with this team in a more direct fashion. The snap count video and the PFF video can both expose problems with the team. Don't get me wrong, but I, I want to take a look at specifically what I think is going wrong. And I want to talk about the offense in this video because that's the side of the ball that has the potential to bail us out and be good this year. I'm a little pessimistic on the defense right now. I don't think they have the right players or they don't have the right coach. That's at least a possibility as well. More likely, I think they don't have the right players to do what they want to do. So I'm not optimistic about the defense playing elite football again this year. I, I think that they'll probably get a little bit better. Maybe by December we're going to have something good, but I, I I feel like they cannot survive injuries at all right now. And they've already had too many injuries. So I'm, I'm not high on that group. I want to talk about the offense, and this video is going to be about what I view as the biggest problem with this offense right now. Uh, before we go further, I hope you like this video. If you do, please click the like button down below. It helps the channel out a lot. Subscribe if you're new and you want daily Seahawks content. We're posting like five videos a day on most days. Uh, become a channel member for $2 a month. Click the bell for notifications. Those are the best ways to help support the channel. All right. So anyway, um, when we are talking about the offense, it's not Geno Smith, no matter how much some people want it to be. It's not DK Metcalf, no matter how much some people just want to run him out of town. And even though I'm more amenable to discussing these guys, I, I don't even know if it's the interior offensive line or the offensive line in general, if you want to just be very uh, glib about it. Yeah, those guys are not playing good, and I think they're a much bigger problem than Geno or Metcalf. But I don't even really think it's those things as far as what is the biggest problem. I think the biggest problem with this offense right now is the pre-snap tells and the corner that Ryan Grubb as the offensive coordinator has to put himself in pretty much every week. So what I mean by that is there are things the Seahawks are doing before the snap that I think are making it very obvious what is coming. There is not a lot of need to respect the whole playbook for the Seahawks because before they even line up, they are reducing their playbook significantly and the defense has figured that out. And that is bigger than any just one player or even two players or three players. I think it's even bigger than the offensive line. I think the offensive line problems could be overcome if not for the issue that I'm going to get into in this video. So keep in mind, as we go into the data that I put together here in this uh, little spreadsheet, um, the Seahawks are passing the ball a lot. And if you want to look at the overall big picture numbers, they're skewed. That has to be kept in mind here. So far, by my count, they have passed the ball on almost 72% of their plays on offense. And they have run the ball on slightly more than 28% of their plays. So it's an imbalance no matter how you slice it. But let's take a look at what happens for each individual receiver and tight end <clears throat> when they're on the field. So let's start at the top with DK Metcalf. When DK Metcalf is on the field for the Seattle Seahawks so far this year, and that includes last night, the Seahawks pass the ball about 75.5% of the time, and they run the ball about 24.5% of the time. So, okay, that's relatively close to the total numbers, right? That's relatively close to the overall. Okay, so we're going to just chalk the imbalance up to the fact that this team is throwing the ball a lot. You can do the same kind of with Jackson Smith. 
when JSN is on the field, we pass the ball about 77% of the time, and we run the ball about 23% of the time. Imbalanced, definitely favoring the passing attack, but not completely out of line with the totals. And that has more to do at the end of the day with the fact that the team has thrown the ball more than they've run. But then I look at something like this, Tyler Lockett. When Tyler Lockett is on the field, the Seahawks are throwing the ball over 82% of the time. And they are running the ball less than 18% of the time. Do you see what I'm getting at here? Do you see what these numbers are starting to reveal? When the Seahawks have Tyler Lockett on the field, they barely ever run the ball. The run game basically doesn't exist when Tyler Lockett's on the field. If I know it, the defense knows it. Okay, you, you picking up what I'm putting down here? So let's look at let's look at Jake Bobo. Not that he plays a ton. He's played less than 100 snaps through six games. But when he's on the field, it's almost 50-50. They pass the ball 52% of the time, and they run the ball 48% of the time. So that means when Jake Bobo's on the field, opposing offenses, or excuse me, opposing defenses look at that and they go, huh, I think they probably are trying to run the ball here. They want to run the ball. This team having an almost even split of passes to runs when Bobo's on the field tells you exactly what they want to do when they get Bobo on the field. Noah Fant, let's look at the tight ends now. Almost 80% of the Noah Fant snaps are passes. Almost 80% of the plays where Noah Fant is on the field, Seattle's throwing the ball. Only 20.4% approximately are they running it. So you see it again. That's a big enough discrepancy to be a tell. I consider that to be a tell. When Noah Fan is on the field, we throw. Especially when you know that if they get another tight end on the field, lo look at these splits. Pharaoh Brown is dead 50-50. 50% 50 -50. run, 50% pass. And A.J. Barner, 54% pass, about 46% run. So when one of those two tight ends gets on the field, Pharaoh Brown or A.J. Barner, you know what they're trying to do in all likelihood. The only reason why it's still slightly slanted towards pass is because the team just can't stop passing the ball, either because they're behind these last three games or they just want to pass the ball. Either way, that's the only reason why it's even close. If this team had anything resembling balance, think about what these numbers would be. It would probably be like A.J. Barner 60% run and Tyler Lockett 70% pass, which would still be a monster tell. So I don't have exact formation data right now, and even if I did, it wouldn't be updated for the most recent games. Formation data tends to take all year to come out. But what I'm trying to say is that what is probably happening with the Seahawks is that when they go three wide, they go Metcalf, Lockett, JSN as the wide receivers. They are almost always throwing the ball. So 11 personnel, when we're in 11 personnel, we throw the ball. So opposing defenses are having a very easy time calling that out, especially when it's Noah Fant as the tight end. Because 11 personnel is one tight end, one back. Nobody has to respect that running back right now. Because when they see Noah Fan out there, they know what's coming. And when the team goes 12 personnel, which is two receivers, two tight ends, one running back, when they get Farrell Brown or A.J. Barner out there, that's a tell too. They are running the ball. So nobody respects the Seahawks running game when they have three receivers on the field and nobody respects the Seahawks running game when they have two tight ends on the field or excuse me the other way around my god I'm all turned all around today you know what I'm saying when we are in three receiver sets when we are in that 11 personnel nobody's scared of the run 
And when we're in 12 personnel with two tight ends, nobody's afraid of the pass. And there are a couple different reasons why this is. I think that this is the reason why I had Metcalf's PFF page pulled up. Look at this run blocking. He's been an atrocious run blocker so far this year. Miserable. And he's never been great at it, but he's never been this bad at it. And we know Lockett can't run block. And we know JSN can't run block. And we know Noah Fant isn't a very good run blocker either. None of those guys can run block. So we don't feel good running the ball when we have those guys out there. We only feel good running the ball when we have Bobo out there, Farrell Brown out there, A.J. Barner out there, because those guys can run block. So, to me, this is the big thing that Seattle's going to have to work through here. They're going to have to figure out how to be more balanced. Either the players need to start playing better, or maybe the coaches just decide, you know what, no offense, I'm sorry it's not working we need A.J. Barner out there because A.J. Barner has been pretty decent catching passes so far this year. Maybe you get him out there full time and you're just like, OK, we're going to throw the ball. We're going to run the ball with A.J. Barner out there constantly. And it's not going to be a tell because he can do both. He can block and he can catch. Maybe that's the play. Maybe the play is you need less Lockett and more Bobo because right now Lockett being on the field is this big honking tell that a pass play is coming. But this is the thing they need to figure out. This is super predictable. And if I'm noticing it, you better believe opposing defenses are noticing it. Us not being able to run the ball against the Niners last night was pathetic. And to me, this is the big reason why. It's too obvious when it's coming just based on who is on the field. It doesn't even matter if it's Ken Walker versus Charbonnet. This is the problem to me. All right. I'll see you guys later. Go Hawks. Let me know what you think down below.